All right, so this this twenty ish minute lecture will be on um, on Git and GitHub. So first thing that I want to point out to everybody is Git and GitHub are not the same thing. So Git is a, what's called a version control software, and you can kind of think of Git as kind of like a it keeps like little snapshots at different points in time. So have people, are people familiar with like the Google Drive world in terms of like, it keeps track of different, uh, you know, it keeps track of different, you know, times that you've edited or something like that. So Google Drive is basically, Google Drive and like all of like the Google online, like office suite of products. It's really cool because it keeps track of different like points in time for you. So you don't have to press save or anything like that. It automatically updates it. So this is a curriculum calendar that's also on your curriculum on that on that first page so that you know what's coming up. And this has been like, this has been tinkered with quite a bit over the year, over the past couple of years. The last edit was on October 2nd, I should probably update this. But if I click on this, there are different versions of this that, that people have updated, right? So the last time that somebody updated, the most up-to-date one is from October 2nd at 1157 a.m. Uh, prior to that, someone named Kara uh, updated this at 9.02 a.m. I updated it, like, you know, probably, it looks like I, I made, like, 50 change, yeah, like, made, like, 100 different changes, um, and then it ended at 4.17 p.m. But let's take a look at what I was doing at, like, 3.13 p.m. or something like that. This is able to go back in time at a specific snapshot in time and say, like, this is what it looked like at that particular point. It's like... Um, it's like when you were, uh, it's kind of like when you were, if you were visiting a grandparent or something like that, and then they, they have these old black and white photos, like I used to be young and attractive like you, and like here's a photograph of that. Similarly, it's kind of like this Google Sheets when it's like, let's say if I go all the way back, when we first started this, it was November 6, 2016. Um, it probably looked quite different than what it does right now. Actually, no, it looks pretty similar. Oh yeah, there, but there's like a whole bunch of blank spots and things like that. But it's interesting because I can go back in time in case something has blown up. I can go back in time to a point that I knew it was it was pretty good. So like Google Sheets is really nice and because it keeps track of literally every change that you've ever made and and it, when it saves, uh, it'll auto automatically save for you. So that's an example of something called the version control software. I can control the different versions that are going out little by little. Let's say that you are writing a piece of code and everything is really, really good. And then you, you, let's say you write some code, you blow up everything. Like everything blows up and then you can't get anything to work. Um, obviously at that point, it's like the most, the most recent push that you made out has broken everything. But I know in the, in the past, I can go back to the old way. Like similarly here, let's say that October 2nd, someone just wrecks everything. At least I know by like September 5th, I can go back to this, I can say, Actually, I'm going to restore this version. I'm going to just say like this is the new kind of like master version. So again, Git is just uh, like a version control software. It's not the same thing as GitHub. And similarly, I'm going to tell everybody this over and over again because I'm going to hear it. Java and JavaScript are two different things. Similarly to how car and carpet are two di different things. Like even though it begins with the same few letters, it's two two very different concepts. So Java and JavaScript are two completely separate languages similar to car and carpet are different things. And just like that, Git and GitHub are also very different. Git is version control, version control software, and GitHub is the, like, the paid platform where all of that stuff is hosted. So if I go to github.com, uh, github.com is literally just a, um, just a, like an online vendor, like a, a company, uh, it's a vendor of online Git repositories. GitHub is the, probably the most prominent one. There's another one called bitbucket.com. So it's like another Git solution. So I can push to, I can push to GitHub, I can push to Bitbucket, I can push to um, Heroku, I can push to GitLab. Like these are all different types of like different vendors for different types of software. GitHub is enterprise level, so they do charge quite a bit of, they could charge a lot of money um, to large enterprise companies. So we're talking like $25 per user per month, kind of, kind of that much money. Uh, Bitbucket is, you know, 
is very similar. GitLab is a little bit different. I, I like GitLab in the sense that it's all open source, so it's, it's free to use. I think it's like a, like a big freemium kind of thing. Um, so if you're like super enterprise, like, hey, please pay us kind of thing. Um, but yeah, these, these are all different types of companies that offer like Git kind of products. Uh, if you also want to work at GitLab, it's all remote, which is also pretty cool. So you can li live and work out of anywhere that you have a uh, internet connection. So their team is 100% distributed all across the world. Pretty cool. But we're, for the purposes of our class and most likely for the duration of your career, you will be working with GitHub. Now GitHub, a little bit of a background on it. Um, it's It tries to emulate a it tries to emulate like, like a social like a social media website, but it does it kind of poorly. So you have your individual um, your individual page. So this is my individual page. I have a picture of myself and my wife. I have a little bit of a little thing about me here, um, and then down here is where people pay the most attention. So in the past year, how many contributions do you have? Uh, this this these little badges of green and stuff like that. I haven't written too much code in the past year. Um, 2016 was a big year for me, but it's kind of like all of these like little badges of green mean like I contributed something to somewhere on, on like on GitHub. So you, you, we want all of your, like all of these things to also be lots and lots of green. So this is like my individual page. I have all of like the repositories, all the code bases that I have contributed to and so on and so forth. And then this is also a place where all, a lot of like professional level code is actually hosted. So let's take a look real quick. We're gonna to go to the Rails organization. Our company, all of our code, everything we wrote, everything is on GitHub. Like, if you looked at the, my, like, my work login, it was just all dark green. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So GitHub has many different organizations. This, there's one called Ruby on Rails. Now Ruby on Rails is an open source uh, Ruby framework to write web applications. And again, a framework is just thousands of lines of code that someone wrote ahead of time to make your life as a developer much, much easier. Um, this organization has Rails on here. So this is the code behind Ruby on Rails. And Ruby on Rails has powered things like Twitter. So Twitter was originally built on Ruby on Rails. It's since moved to more of a Java framework because Ruby is slow and Java is not. Um, Groupon was written on Ruby on Rails. Raised, it's like, I think they just got like a few billion dollars. I think they have a few billion dollar valuation or something like that. It's also written in Rails. So major companies are written in Ruby on Rails. Um, and it's very, very actively maintained. When you look at any sort of repository, um, repository just meaning like a, like a project folder, um, you wanna look a little bit up here. So a fork, is basically someone saying, I want to like, I want to have, I want to take your code from where it exists right now and bring it under my username. So if I were to fork this over, it would no longer be under github.com slash rails slash rails. It'd be github.com slash my username, jm217 slash rails. Like I'm basically cloning it from where it exists onto like, and I'm bringing it into my, um, into my username. So it's kind of like, I'm taking away from like the super, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a training ground. It's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna emulate, I don't know how to say this, I'm not gonna say it. It's kind of like I'm emulating, um, I'm, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just gonna go out on a limb here, okay? So it's kind of like, if you, if you go through, when you go through basic training, you are, they try to mimic the conditions uh, or like the training so that you will be prepared when you arrive at some place, right? So it's kind of like that, it's, it, but it's a, safe, it's a safe space, right? It's, it's very controlled, it's, you can't affect a ton of people or anything like that, and you're being trained at that particular moment, you're, you're learning as you go. When you fork it over, it's a similar concept. I'm bringing it from like where it's like, this is, this is kind of like being deployed, this is being used all across the world, um, and instead of like, throwing all the code in here, all the updates I'm gonna be making is in like a very safe sandbox kind of, uh, kind of environment. So this is the number of people who have forked it. So 15,000 people have forked it. These little stars are how many people have more or less liked a, um, liked a particular repository and how many people are watching it at this particular time. 
Now, when you are looking at any sort of code base, you want to take a look all the way on the right hand side over here. You want to see all of these, most of these numbers being very, very recent. So it's kind of like this was updated nine months ago, this was nine days ago, this was one day ago. So I know that this is something that is popular, it's being well maintained, like there's a lot of people working on this. Now let's take a look at a few things. So there are things called issues. These are things that people have discovered, hey, there's, an, there's a bug here, you know, there's a, there's a bug with your software. And then because it's open source, the entire community can like raise an issue and like tell like, hey, I, we, we're using this, this is what we're finding. And because of that, it's open to the community, you're able to make updates very quickly and because other people besides your core team can actually contribute some stuff. So these are all different things that are kind of wrong with this right now. Like you can see this one was opened 15 days ago by this person. And this is the, this is the particular thing that they said was, uh, was an issue. Pull requests are basically like, I, I found something, I found an issue of some sort. I found some typos. Um, it looks like something was, something is incorrect. And I want to make it into, I want to make it in such a way, <coughs> I like, I want to fix it so that it, like your most recent thing update, your most recent update reflects that it's been completely changed and, and is good to go. So are these people just like random people just voluntarily contributing on their own time? Yes. So it's not, they don't work for Ruby or Actually, nobody really works for Rails. So okay. ra because Rails is completely open source, this is a kind of a cool thing. Because Rails is completely open source, nobody actually pays for it. But if you, when I click on these contributors right here, there are a few people who are big time contributors and I'll, you'll see it in just a second. First one's gonna be a person named DHH. DHH is, is actually a Chicago native, um, worked at a, founded a company called uh, 37 signals or something like that it was a consulting firm and he was mostly writing in PHP and what he found was I'm writing the same thing over and over and over again so I, I, I don't want to do this anymore I'm going to create a script to do it and he was like so with that he started creating rails you can kind of see in terms of the number of commits and we'll talk about all this later like he has the most lines of code added and the most lines of code removed he has the most times that he's touched this particular code base um, he now works for a company called Basecamp. It's also here in Chicago, and I'm pretty sure he's got enough money from there that uh, his whole Instagram page, I kid you not, is just a, I, it actually is, I'm not, that's not, that's not it. <laughs> DHH uh, Rails Instagram. Okay, here we go. So this is DHH. He created Ruby on Rails and his entire life now is just racing race cars and going to these ridiculous places. So yes, tech could be very good for you. But he's also still an active maintainer and the core contributor of Rails. So he still keeps up with his technical chops. But first, these people are just geniuses. So yeah, no one actually gets paid by Rails to do this. This is all volunteer stuff. So it's just pure passion. It's, it's like pure passion and companies will actually sponsor you. Like you will be on their staff. They will pay you money as like a staff engineer. Um, but your job is to maintain XYZ, like Ruby on Rails. So I know Tenderlove, this person, I've seen this uh, ridiculous picture. Um, <laughs> this person actually works for GitHub in Seattle, but most of his time is going to be spent doing stuff for Rails. Like, so he's paid by GitHub, he's employed by GitHub, but GitHub says, actually work on this open source software. We want to brag that we have Aaron Peterson or something like that. Um, the person who wrote Ruby, his name is, uh, his name shortened is just Mots. He works for a company called Heroku. So he wrote the language that this is built on. Like he, he wrote a programming language that, that's very popular. He's just employed as a regular engineer. Um, so that's, I think that's pretty cool. But for other people who don't get paid to maintain this, like it, there are many different, there are, you know, 2000 plus uh, people who have, who have added to this. If I jump all the way down to the bottom, I have like this one person who has 46 commits and 981 lines of code. Or when I jump up here into the pull request, these are just random people trying to get their code inside of the code base. What do you, why do you think, what do you think the benefit is for these people to volunteer their time to get, to get in? Experience. Experience, what else? 
resume. That's pretty much the big things. It's the experience of like, I'm good enough to, um, oh, internet connection, let's see. I'm good enough to write code that's gonna be put into the core bit of Rails and everyone's going to use it. And on top of that, like I can actually say like, I have three pull requests, like three of my changes are now inside the Rails. Like I'm good enough to that point. So it is, it is a resume building thing. Um, be prepared for a lot of battles back and forth that you can see there's seven conversations for this one that was open four days ago, nine conversations. Some of the ones that are closed as well, there's going to be like 15 things that people are saying, five things. Some of them are just like, like really easy, like good to go, but be prepared for a real fight. Um, but if you can ever get any code inside of Rails here, you're far ahead of the game. So you, have, you have to be pretty experienced then? You have to be very experienced. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. You have to be like, yeah, real top notch. Like, because the small things like typos and things like that you can grab, but they're going to say like, oh, you contributed to Rails, what'd you do? Fix the typo. <laughs> it's, it's something, but it's not like... Yeah, two yeah. Lines so where, of do we, like, where do we start our level? For, like, that's, a, that's actually a great one. So there's one uh, 100 days of code. There are... There's a bunch of places online. There's something called the 100 days of code. There's um, yourfirstpr.com or something like that, or your first pull request, where they have very, very beginner friendly um, things of like how to contribute to the open source community. Uh, you're not gonna be going into Ruby on Rails and looking at the source code and fixing a bunch of stuff. That's just not gonna happen with a few months of experience. But there might be some things that you can, you can update. Um, but yeah, there's, uh, 100 days of code is pretty good. Your first PR is another one. And I can find more resources as we go along. Uh, so again, your job is to write a lot of code. Write a lot of code to the point where like all of this should be green. Um, if you have one or two contributions, it's light green. If you have a lot of contributions, it's dark green. Um, your goal is to look as close to like the first half of this as possible, you know? Um, and we're, we're gonna prepare you for that right now. All right, so if you can turn this way, I'm gonna stop sharing at this point. Stop share, I have two chat questions. What was the question that led to 100 days of code? Yeah, it's uh, basically how do you, like if, if I can't, if I can't contribute to something as big as Rails, like how do I start contributing to open source? Like how do I get some credit onto my, how do I get some, some street credit for, for like all the things that I'm, I'm writing? Um, and it was just kind of like, there's online sites like 100 Days of Code, you can read how that person got, like wrote code for 100 days. Um, and then how to, and then I think it's called your first PR, your first pull request. All right, let's turn this way. <clears throat> All right. I'll draw one big line going down this way. And I want I want you to imagine this as kind of like the life of your of your code base, right? Let's say uh, name a company you want to get hired by. CTC. CTC. Okay. See, let's say CTC is working on uh, recruitment software, right? We start off on day zero. And we have the end, end result, which will never actually happen because software is always going to be building unless you kill it, right? It's ne there's never a point where software stops and says, like, I'm never going to change it from here on out. That's never going to happen unless you decide to kill the project. So let's say that this is the lifeline of your project, and this is kind of like, this is an arrow going this way because it's infinite. It's always going to be going down. Let's say everyone starts right over here, right? This is the origination point. This line right here is called the master line. The master line is basically, it's also known as a branch. The master branch is basically what is, what is the most up-to-date, what's, like, what's the point of truth um, at all times? Like what is being pushed into production? What are our customers using at any specific given point in time? Like master is the most up-to-date. So if I wanna change anything, I wanna push anything into master, then I have to like, actively, I, I feel like, like a lot of review has to happen in order for that to happen. 
But what happens if like well, we hire somebody brand new, they don't know what they're doing, they destroy the database by, they destroy the database or all this code by accident and then they push it into master. What happens at that point? Like that's where this version control really comes into play. GitHub really like revolutionized Git through the concept of what's called disposable branches. Disposable branches are basically like little sandbox environments, little clones off of master where you can start working. So let's say that I have a team here in the US and I have, let's have two developers. So I'll have Daniel and I'll have Aaron. Daniel's gonna start right around this day. Let's say Daniel gets hired. So I'll just call this Daniel hired. Okay. And I tell Daniel, I want you to work on the logging in and logging out functionality of my website. Again, this is something I've just uh, I've just created. We're going to call this uh, recruitment software. We'll just call this recruiting. So Daniel is hired, and this is like the birth of the of the uh, of the code. So Dan D Daniel was hired very very early on. At this point, Daniel is going to have is he's gonna create his own branch. What a branch is, is basically I'm going to, I have a clone of master, but I'm no longer inside the, like the master path. So I'm gonna branch off here, and I'm going to operate in parallel. But I have all the code at this particular point. I'll call this like login or something like that. Shortly after, we realize we need extra people, so I hire Aaron. And I tell Aaron, I want you to work on something else. I want you to work on credit card processing. By the way, you should never process your own credit card information. There's, there are entire companies that do that for you. And uh, there's a lot of state regulations and federal regulations. So you should just let the pros do what they do best. Like never try to write your own software to process credit card information. Just use somebody else's stuff. So Daniel is working at this particular point from login and Aaron has a totally different uh, task. He's working on credit card processing. These are two separate branches off of master. So they branched off at different times. Let's say at one point, Daniel's login is all completely finished. So again, he branched off of master at this particular point and has a branch called login or something like that. At this point, he says, okay, I've done a bunch of changes. I think my login is good to go. I want to take all the changes that I've made. I want to push it back into master. At this point, I'm going to shorten this a little bit just to give myself some more room. <coughs> At this point, he's basically going to say, like, I have all the changes. I have master. I also have login. I want to move all of the stuff that I wrote inside of login. I want to make the new master, like, which everyone is going to work off of at this point. If everything goes well, the new starting point for everyone else after this is going to be right here. Does that kind of make sense? Who wants to explain what a branch, uh, like a Git branch is? So my question is, mm -hmm. this line that we're looking at, mastermind, is this a time scale? Or is this like a you progress? Can, you can kind of think of this as, as time, and, time and progress. Yeah. Okay. So you said everyone starts at that, that next, the, the latest tick mark? Kind of, it's like anyone coming into my, anyone coming into this project, in my recruiting project, or any new person starting on this, the new master, instead of starting over here at the birth, when it was first in, incepted, um, it's going to be now based off of this. Like if you go into a, like a company, you're not gonna start at, with the code base when they first started off ever, right? You're gonna get the most up to date. What this is, what, what, what's happening here is this login branch is basically all the code that I need to log in. I'm saying I need to, like, I want that to be inside of master. I want that to be like a, the most updated thing. See, like this makes a lot of sense if you've got two people on it. And, but what if, you know, what if his credit card processing thing mm -hmm. took a piece of the, the existing master code mm -hmm. that he was already working on and he needed, but he deleted it because it didn't help with credit card processing. So his fix from master gets pushed to master, and then his fix can't get pushed to master because it breaks his fix. Okay. 
that's that's kind of why I said like remember this is the point of truth right mm -hmm. so whatever is in the here already you have to change your code no matter what to go in with his with his changes as well so it's kind of like it's kind of a it's kind of like a race right yeah. let's say like like you said Daniel writes the uh, the login stuff everything is good it gets merged in uh, Aaron's uh, credit card processing is right about to go in however like it breaks it breaks the login functionality guess who has to fix it Aaron has to fix it because at this point everyone's already said the login is part of master that's the source of truth that's good to go you want to add new stuff but you're breaking other stuff it's your it's your job to fix it unfortunately you probably have to go over to Daniel and say hey I broke something how do we how do we fix this or something like that that's where this starts to pick up quite a bit um, so the idea here at any given time we're doing it very sim simplistically um, like th this is just two people working on two different branches realistically in a, any given team you have probably around six to eight developers working on you know maybe three or four different branches a day kind of thing so you're looking at what 32 branches in a week roughly or so I don't know Andrew what is, what is in the of science at any given time we had about 40 engineers and we usually had about 600 branches open. Yeah. <laughs> so, and um, a lot of them were not active. A lot of them had like a lot more, a lot of activity and some of them only got updated to right now. But a lot of branches, a lot of opportunity for conflicts and issues so, um, stuff like that. And it's just a fact of developer life. You just have to like deal with conflicts. It's just something that comes up. So. So let's say, so Daniel's one is pretty simple. Just log in, he branched off at this point, he joined at this point <coughs> and branched off. So, okay, I like I like this login stuff and now it's gonna be merged into master. So he's, that, he's finished. That so login's ahead. considered a branch? The login is considered a branch at this point. So you grant, you're gonna, always gonna, this won't make any sense until you actually start doing it, but you're, you're always going to branch off of master. Okay. So you never wanna be pushing directly to master because you're saying like, which has happened multiple times with Mike, which is Sorry. why he's laughing. And will definitely happen with people here. Do not push the master because that's basically like saying like the new source of truth is me. Yeah, I'm gonna push everything directly and without review. Like don't do that. You wanna branch off and have other people review your code before anything happens. So Daniel's done. His is pretty simple, but Aaron's a little bit screwed because he brand, he's, he was hired after Daniel. He's working on his credit card processing. And he didn't realize that all of the crap from uh, Daniel's stuff is now breaking all of his credit card processing. So you can kind of see Aaron's a little bit out of date. His starting point is over here, but everyone else's like starting point is at this point. He needs to bring his branch all the way up to date with this before he can merge in. Otherwise, if he just merges in at this point, he doesn't, he doesn't take into consideration like, hey, things have been updated since. So at this particular point, Aaron needs to what's do something called pulling from master, meaning he needs to download all the changes that have happened uh, that have happened since you know since he started. And for for like a company like Narrative Science or the companies I used to work at, you need to pull like every hour because there's like small changes that happen all the time. Um, if you wait like a day or two, you might be looking at like three thousand lines of code that you forgot to pull in, and then all of your stuff is broken. So you want to pull in quite often just to make sure that you uh, all that code that you may have not have downloaded into your code base, um, because right, as I said, right now we have two people, but you know, like uh, like Andrew was saying, he had you know six hundred branches or something like that. Twenty of those could have been merged in between here and here. Like you don't know, so you always need to be pulling in all that most recent stuff. So Aaron's working on his credit card processing. Master's been updated, so he, at this point, he's going to pull down all those changes. He's going to download all those changes into his uh, into his branch. He realizes everything is working um, in, a, in an ideal world, and he's saying, "Okay, I, I, credit card processing is good to go. I'm I'm ready to merge it in. Someone will re review the code. If it's, it gets a thumbs up, it'll get merged in with the rest of the code, and the master branch no longer starts here, but is now at Aaron's step, which also includes his credit card processing and the login and everything that goes on before him. This is kind of like a high level overview of what Git actually is. Are there any questions on this? Remote?
right, we're gonna come back over here for just a second. Share my screen. <coughs> okay. Okay, so let's jump into iTerm for a real quick second. So I'm here and I, how do I, what's the git command to download something from GitHub? Is, is clone. Git clone, okay. So we ran this yesterday, git clone and then whatever that giant URL was. When I cloned it down, here it is inside of def grandma. So let's say I'm jumping over into def grandma and I'm gonna send everyone my, my bash profile set up so that you can see what branch that you're on as well. So currently we're on the master branch and I have a whole bunch of things that I've changed. Remember when I opened it up a little bit earlier? Um, I see it again. You can kind of see it here, like all of these changes, let's pretend that this works for some reason. Um, so I've written the code, I've done everything that I wanted to do. Uh, I wanna make my changes, I wanna push my changes for review. I want, like, so when you're submitting homework and classwork and things like that, you're gonna open what's called a pull request, which we're gonna walk through right now. So for myself to review, for Mike to review, or any of the TAs to review as well. So first things first, I'm on the master branch. I don't wanna be on the master branch because I'm basically saying like, I'm the source of truth. Like everyone needs to like listen to what I have to say. So I'm gonna create a new branch. Does anyone know off the top of their head the command to create a new branch? I'm just gonna guess get new. Get new, close, <laughs> it's not, it's not that. So I'm gonna do git checkout dash b, um, and then I'm going to create a new branch. I'll call this John's branch. So git checkout dash b, John's branch. Checkout is basically saying I'm moving from one branch to another. The dash b flag is saying this is going to be a new branch and, and I'm checking out and I'm gonna change into it called John's branch. So when I click, when I enter this, it says switch to a new branch, John's branch. So I'm no longer on master, as you can see here, before it said master, now it says John's branch. So I'm in my own little kind of, uh, I'm in my own kind of small, uh, like sandbox area, I'm safe here. Like I don't have to worry too much. Now I wanna see all the changes I've made. So this is one thing that you're gonna run all the time called git status. So you'll start to notice that when you, were, when you run JavaScript function files, what's, what's the command for it? Node. But when you run Ruby files, what's the command for it? Ruby. When you run git commands, you just write git in front of it. So all git commands are gonna have git at the very beginning. So it's git checkout, git status, git <clears throat> push or whatever, so git clone. Got two stupid questions. Mm -hmm. This is Linux commands. These are Git commands. Okay. Yes. So, okay. And um, this part of Git mm -hmm. checkout. Mm -hmm. What what would you call checkout? Like the function of checkout. It's kind of like the. Um, it's like so basically this is separated into like Git, which is saying like, hey computer, like this is a Git function of some sort. Uh, checkout is kind of like like the main method so status checkout all that kind of that's like the main method this is what I'm going to be running on it and then these little dashes and stuff like that these are these are extra little flags some of them take flags some of them do not so like I can run git clone with something I can run git status without anything I can run git checkout dash b or git checkout something I have there's a little cheat sheet in your today's curriculum uh, I would I, I do have printed copies as well, just kind of keep it handy. Um, you're, you're definitely gonna need it. So I've cloned it, I've checked out a new branch, I've made some changes, I'm gonna run git status. Now this is where a lot of people get a little bit uh, mixed up. So can people see that, should I minimize this? I feel like I should. Remote, you can see this okay? All right, I'll take that as a yes, because I didn't hear it now. Um, so as of right now, you can see all the things that have changed, though they're all in red. If I want to say like, let's say I want at this point, like nothing is in the staging area, what's called the staging area. So I've made a bunch of changes. I have not given my stamp of approval. I haven't added anything. Like I'm, I'm, I need to manually add it and manually write a little message. So run git status. I have all the things I've changed and I say, okay, the thing I really care about 
is this, um, this let's say I, I just want to, I, I fix something with the readme. So I want to add this particular file to the staging area to say like, this is what I want to write inside of a commit. So I'm going to write git commit, uh, wait, git add readme.md. Now when I run git status again, you can kind of see the colors have changed. I have, before I had two things in red, none of them, neither of them was added to the staging area. At this point, one of them is green and one of them is red. This green thing is, is something that's in the staging area. Like I'm kind of adding and removing things at, at a certain point. Um, what's a good analogy for this? Uh, is there a military analogy for this? Like you kind of like add and remove things until a certain point where you're saying like, this is good to go. Yeah, it's like every, um, like uh, every, uh, Every process, whether it be a tank, a new gun, a new uniform, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. you're gonna have people are gonna have to review it. You just gotta get you know. the same inspection. That's kind of like after you your pull request. Yeah. Better. How about beforehand? Like kind of like I'm going to be adding and removing things. Well, um, <clears throat> when we do uh, convoys, mm -hmm. uh, say there's like 20 trucks, okay. you're gonna do like a four truck convoy. Okay. If you actually have a staging area. Before we do a patrol, okay. we pick our, our our four vehicles we're going to use, mm -hmm. and if one breaks down, we switch it out. Okay, and then when we're ready to go, we uh, we uh, what's the word for SP? We're like uh, we start our patrol. Okay, yeah, that's actually a perfect that's actually a perfect analogy, right? It's like at one given like right now we're only dealing with one one or two files. Pretty soon you'll be dealing with three or four, and then up after that you're going to be dealing with like twenty. In like three or four weeks, you'll be dealing with like twenty or twenty-five files at one time. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of different moving parts, and you don't want to stage all of those things right away. So what's happening is kind of like what Raymond said. Like let's say one of the one of your trucks or one of your tanks is not working quite as well. I'm going to exchange that. I'm only going to pick and choose what I want at a certain point, and then I'm going to send the inside that staging area. I'm saying good to go, and then I'm sending those people out. Um, similarly, then I push my code up to GitHub and say, like, these are the, this is the code that I want. So I've got this readme right here. So it's inside, I had a whole bunch of different files before. I've, add, I've decided to add this readme to my staging area, like it's good. I did git, so I first ran, I, I cloned, right? And I created, checked out a new branch so that I'm no longer working on the master branch. I'm running git status, this won't hurt anybody ever just to see like what's been going on, what has diff what's different from the last time that you cloned down? Like what did you change? I changed the readme, I, I changed defgrandma.js. So I see these are the things that I've changed and I want to add the readme to the staging area. Like this one is good to go. I, I, I feel confident in what I've changed inside the readme. Then when I, when I run git status again, one is green and one is red. This is inside the staging area. This is outside of the staging area. So when it's in the staging area, mm -hmm. that's when it's readable by the public or by other nope. people? Nope. No, this is just on your machine. We haven't pushed to GitHub yet. Oh. So this is not readable by other people yet. This is, you're, you're just getting, it's kind of like it, when you're doing patrols in other places, they don't see you getting ready, right? They see you when you're doing the, the doing when you're doing, yeah. <laughs> When you're doing the patrol, right? Like they know that you're there, because, but like you are, you're all, you're wearing uniforms and you are, you know, you know, doing what you've been trained to do. But there was a lot of things to lead up to that point. And it's kind of like only when, when you, when people see you doing your patrol, that's when it's been pushed to production. Okay. Okay. All right. So this is just behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. This is behind the scenes. The dash A flag on that command that almost this one you can this one i would ignore like don't do dash a dash a is a yeah don't don't dash a yeah so again i've added this to the staging area and do you have to get clearance from anybody like say, like yeah. someone has to come through and say like everyone looks good now you can go yeah, or like yeah. someone has to give a stamp of approval right yeah we uh we say we're ready to headquarters mm -hmm. and then headquarters approves us to leave okay because they'll check uh like the weather conditions mm -hmm. if like there's a sandstorm, they'll say, no, you can't. Okay. Or there's like a uh, reported, a newly reported like bomb on the road. Mm -hmm. They won't let us leave. Okay. So, but so at some, at some time, someone has to say like, like we are good to go, right? Yeah. Okay. So similarly here, we've, we've been added to the staging area. We've cho picked and chose what we wanted. At this point, we want to say, this is 
good to go. I want to give my stamp of approval. At that point, I'm going to do git commit dash m space and then two single quotes, two double quotes. It doesn't matter. It just has to be has to be consistent. And then um, I changed something with the readme to fix the verbiage in the grandma prompt. This is your little, you want to have very, very descriptive commit messages. Um, I remember what, you, do you remember what your commit <coughs> messages were, Mike? I wrote, I wrote some code. That's the worst possible <laughs> thing that you could have. I want to take a quick detour before we actually push this. And I want to go into uh, github.com slash rails slash rails. When I look at these commits here, when I, like as a as a like a manager or something like that i can look straight down here and i know more or less what's happened inside of that commit this is a merge i changed active storage destroy callbacks i added a referrer policy i rebuilt like these should be as descriptive as you possibly can make them as of right now um, i f fixed the description for images like I, I don't know what any of this is but i know more or less what i'm about to get into I wrote some code is not going to be terribly helpful. Like I don't know what, I don't know exactly what's happened in that pull request. When you take a look at uh, this commit here, like this is very descriptive. Like I changed something with the readme to fix the verbiage in the grandma prompt. You don't have to go this level of detail, but you want it to be descriptive. And this is your stamp of approval, your message saying to the world, it's good to go. Now if I run git status again, you can kind of see that I no longer have that green file anymore because it's already been it's already been staged. It's already had a stamp of approval. Now I'm just get, getting ready to push it up to GitHub. Uh, so if what do you think? Just total guess. What do you think the uh, the the Git command is for pushing? Git push. It's just Git push, and then John's John's branch. So what's what's the M flag? On the commit? The dash M is basically saying I'm writing a message oh, direct, directly here mm -hmm. in, in the terminal. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right here. I said what's the M flag like the get commit? I wanna see if I wanna see if it doesn't if it works on its own. It might. So hopefully this works. Nope. Dang it. So the way to push it up, you're gonna write git push origin and then the name of your branch. I'm not gonna get into origin terribly much right now, but basically you can push to multiple places. You can push to GitHub. You can also push to Heroku or Amazon Web Services. You can push to a bunch of different places. So this is, a, this is the way to say like I'm pushing to GitHub. Um, it won't make a ton of sense until a few, a few weeks from now. So git push origin John's branch. I push this up. Uh, at this point today, when you start pushing up your deaf grandma, which I'm going to ask you to do in just a little bit, um, it's going to prompt you for your password. You'll enter it once, and then if everything we set up yesterday works, then you won't ever have to enter it ever again. So the changes that I've made on my machine are no longer on my machine. They've been pushed up to um, they've been pushed up to GitHub.com. So if I jump over here to Echo Platoon slash deaf grandma. Me as an instructor, I can look here. Okay, there's a recently pushed branch. Someone decided to make some sort of changes. So I'm gonna hit this compare and pull request here. And there is a, um, there's a little template that I, want you, that you, I want you all to start filling out. Just to, some time to reflect, like who did you work with? If you had somebody, how'd you come up with the solution? Did you have any questions along the way? If you had more time, like I want you to fill this out if you want to, it's a good practice. Uh, I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to. I'm gonna create this pull request. Oh crap, I, I'm gonna close this pull request. Actually, I'm just going to edit. Uh, spoke too soon, give me one second. All right, so I'm here again. Um, I would fill out something here, and I'm going to point this, actually you, you won't have this option, but it's just because I have so many of these. Um, oh shoot, hold on. Okay. 
So I create this pull request. Now, as an instructor, I can come in here and I, this is the way I'm gonna basically be checking all of your code because I got 15 messages last night from different people at different times. I have one central place to go. So if I wanna look at the deaf grandma uh, challenge, I'll go to the site, I'll take a look at these pull requests and I say, oh, jayoung217 open something. Here's that little bit of code. And I'm gonna review it by hitting this files changed. When I look here, the things that are in red are the things that you've removed. The things that are in green are the things that you've added. So this is the way that I can see like, hey, before it was nothing and then now like all of Sharif's code is in here and I can review that pretty easily. So if I take a look in here, I say, okay, if you ask a question or if you talk to her, okay, this looks good, pretty good to me. So I'll say, it looks good to me. I'll comment and then I'm going to merge this into master. So now all of master is no longer where it was before, but it's now uh, including all of these changes. So it's moved forward by a little bit. So the big things you need to know, uh, can people see this? So first things first, we're going to uh, get clone and then we're gonna change whatever code you need to. Then we're gonna run git status. We're going to git add file name or something like that, what, whichever file, specific file that you wanna add. Then we're gonna do git commit dash m. Your message for me goes here. And I'm gonna do git, oh, whoops. Push git clone, git checkout dash b. Your branch name here, and git push origin your branch name here. This is how we're going to be doing it for pretty much from now on. Um, let's do this one more time with the actual death grandma code so you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, are there any questions before anything else? I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just curious, is there a pull and merge? There is. I term? What's that? Or for the git command? Mm -hmm. There is pull and there is merge. Okay, but it's just easier to read the comments on browser? Or is there, what's, is there a reason why you're using the browser? Oh, I, I can't. Um, it, those, those are different things. So git pull is to, like, like when we were talking a little bit earlier with Aaron, yeah. right there. Um, so Aaron, Aaron's thing was uh, he, he needs to pull in all of the new master code, right? Because the login stuff is now pulled in. So when you do git pull, it's saying all the different changes that have been since, since the last time that I pulled. So I'm just downloading changes. Um, so what's the difference between pulling and then cloning the most recent change? You could do that as well. Yeah, oh, okay. but then you just delete you everything. Lost what you wrote. Yeah, you lost what you wrote. Because then you delete your entire repository okay. and then you clone oh. it again. Oh, okay. yeah. So you don't want to do that. Okay. So yeah. that's a great question, actually. All right, so let's go back. Let's open a new branch. So I'm on John's branch. Uh, let's say I want to do some. Let's. I want to check out to master. So what was the git command to check to check out to another branch? Git check out. And I want to go to master. Okay. So I've switched over to master, and because master is something that already exists, I don't have that dash b. So I'm going to do. How do I? Okay. Let me check out to a new branch. So git check out dot dash b. John's answer. So I've switched to a new a new branch. Let's run git status. I have this uh, def grandma.js. So I'm gonna do, how do I add this to the staging area? Git add. Yep, git add and then the file name. And then I wanna write a little message, a stamp of approval saying that we're good to go. What's that? Dash m. Git dash m. Commit dash m. Commit dash m. And then inside of single or double quotes, your choice, but it has to be consistent. Um, here is my solution to JavaScript or something like that. All right. Now, how do I push this up to uh, <laughs> your uh, your message? You got a typo. I would totally go in and fix that <laughs> to to make a modification. Uh, I don't want people amending commits yet. It takes too much time to learn at this point. Um, what is uh? How do I push to GitHub at this point? Push git push uh, origin. Mm -hmm. Origin what? John's answer. John's answer. 
cool. Let's see what happens. So I'm here, I'm on Echo Platoon. A new branch has been pulled. Um, you're just gonna hit this compare pull request. And uh, I'm gonna create this pull request here. Now I'm over here, I can kind of see like before it was empty and now this is all the code that we've written. And then I will leave little comments here and there like this is bad or something like that. Uh, or like, have you considered moving this to line four or something like that? So I'll leave little comments for you if you want me to. Sound good? Cool. Um, all right, it's 11.30. It's super hot. Uh, before, no, we have this room all day. Um, let's take another 10 minutes, uh, run to the restroom or something, and I'll try to, I'll cover, I'll cover JavaScript fundamentals really fast because I'm pretty sure everyone is doing pretty well at it. <laughs>